Good afternoon. I'm Adrian Dix, BC Minister of Health. Beside me to my left is Dr. Bonnie Henry, our Provincial Health Officer. We're honored to be here on the traditional territories of the Musqueam, of the Squamish, of the tsleil tooth people. Uh, tomorrow we'll be doing a briefing session at 3 o'clock as well, right here at the Vancouver Cabinet Offices. And with that, I wanted to introduce Dr. Bonnie Henry. Thank you. Good afternoon. Um, we'll start today with an update on uh, what is happening with uh, the number of people who have tested positive for COVID-19 here in British Columbia today. Um, as of today, we have 40 new cases to report for a total of 271 people who have tested positive so far here in British Columbia. And by health authority, 152 are in Vancouver Coastal Health, 81 in Fraser Health Authority, 22 are now on Vancouver Island, uh, 12 in Interior Health area, and four remain in the north. We have, uh, unfortunately and sadly, uh, one additional death to report here in British Columbia today. Of the cases that we have, 17 are now in hospital, so that's an increase from 13 from yesterday, with nine of those people being in intensive care right now. We continue to have only five who are in our recovered uh, list. However, um, we know that most of those people are actually doing very well. Their symptoms have resolved um, at home, as with most of our cases so far, and we are awaiting um, their clearance uh, with laboratory testing. So a, a good number of our cases, particularly in Vancouver Coastal Health, are related to the three long-term care facility outbreaks that we've been following over the last little while. So, and the additional death that we mentioned today um, was again from the Lynn Valley Care Centre where the outbreak is uh, continuing there. We also uh, have so far only one resident and one staff member from the Hollyburn long-term care facility, although that investigation, of course, is ongoing, and we know that there are people within the incubation period there as well. And uh, yesterday we reported on uh, the third long-term care facility at Harrow Park, where the one resident from that facility is now in hospital um, and recovering from that. So as we've been following in the last few days, we know that there's been uh, dramatic changes in our society and in the things that we're doing here in British Columbia to do the best that we can to try and slow down and prevent the transmission of this infection in our communities, in our families, and in our province. This is not optional, and I want to be very clear that everybody needs to take these actions now and this is what's going to protect us for the next few weeks. It's going to protect ourselves. It's going to protect our families and going to protect our communities. The importance cannot be minimized. Having said that, you know, I'm very heartened by some of the things that we've been seeing here across the province in people physically distancing as we've as, we, as we've directed, but maintaining that so important social connection that we have with each other and that we continue to need. There are many innovative ways that people are doing things, things like virtual coffee dates, takeout windows at restaurants and entrances, people who are supporting each other, dropping off food, dropping off homemade goodies, taking people's medications to them. These are things that are really important to help us stay connected. Um, in particular, we want to make sure that we're not socially isolating our seniors who are the most vulnerable to having severe illness, people who have underlying illnesses, people with disabilities. And I'm calling on all of us to do what we can as our communities to support everybody. As individuals, I also encourage you to, to get outside. There are things you can do, even if we're doing social distancing. You can walk your pet, you can go for a bike ride, you can play with your kids. And these are the things that you want to do in a small group, as a family, together, and maintain your distance from others when you're outside as well. And inside, of course, there are many things now that are being available to people online, there's courses, there's exercise classes, there's ebooks, there's many museums now that are putting information online, putting their, their, um, uh, their paintings, their, uh, their um, 
their holdings online for people to be able to access and use. These are educational opportunities as well for you and your family. I think this, this is, as I mentioned yesterday, a really critical time for us. This is the time we need to build that firewall. We need to stop the transmission of this disease. We need to stay connected while we're staying apart. And we need to take care of each other while we're doing that. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Dr. Henry. And uh, of course, today we are announcing that uh, an additional person who's passed away from COVID-19 associated with the Lynn Valley Care Home. And uh, our hearts go out both to their families and to the people working at Lynn Valley who um, will obviously be shaken and saddened by this as we are. Uh, as Dr. Henry has said, we have 40 additional cases today. That's 271 province-wide, 17 in hospital, uh, and nine currently in ICU. And of those in ICU, eight are in the Vancouver Coastal Health Authority and one in the Fraser Health Authority. Just to keep you up to date on some of the activities, uh, we're obviously, as, as all of you know, we'll be announcing um, our weekly testing number tomorrow morning uh, through the BCCDC website. That testing continues. Uh, the work uh, is going on 24-7 at the BCCDC and around BC at other sites that are processing testing. And uh, obviously that effort, which is a science-based effort, is, gonna, is continuing uh, full throttle. I wanted to say something about a uh, question I was asked yesterday about MSP coverage for people returning to British Columbia. The chair of the Medical Services Commission has made the, f uh, the following decisions regarding MSP coverage. That the MSP coverage wait period will be waived for those who are returning from impacted areas and intend to stay in BC. We're also waiving the wait period for those who return to BC and it is found that they were uh, outside the, of the province for longer than the allowable time period to maintain MSP coverage. MSV beneficiaries who are out of province and are unable to return but may be provided with temporary coverage. We, must, uh, also, we also must address those who have expired BC services card. Beneficiaries who are either unwilling or unable to attend an ICBC office can contact Health Insurance BC and request a con confirmation of coverage letter advising that their MSP coverage is still affected. Note that a beneficiary may use the, the personal health number on their expired BC services card to access provincially funded health care services. They just need to show another piece of ID. Finally, for those who have applied to MSP but still need to complete the MSP enrollment by attending an ICBC office, we are providing a period of temporary coverage that will result in a letter issued to the individual stating that they have MSP coverage. This letter with the issued P personal health number may be used to access provincially funded health services. There will be a statement uh, from, the, from the Commission, or I believe that has or will be going out, that confirms the details of all those information. I want to thank all the people working at 811 which has been a lifeline for many people in British Columbia, answering literally thousands of calls a day. Also, the people who, who uh, yesterday at the 188 uh, COVID-19 number who answered 1,895 calls yesterday. And uh, just note that our self-assessment tool at the end of yesterday um, had uh, been accessed over 1.15 million times. Those are all uh, significant uh, uh, achievements in, in being able to give people access to the information that they need. As uh, Dr. Henry has said, there are extraordinary things happening all over BC as people work together to follow the directives of the Provincial Health Office and do what they need to do uh, to support their community and support one another during this difficult period. And we are um, uh, very, very honored and pleased as a community for the offers of support, the offers of both financial in some cases, but often just community support. The number of people who responded to Dr. Henry's uh, request for blood donors yesterday, which I think is exceptional and speaks well of our province and who we are. Uh, Dr. Henry has made it clear from the start what we ask British Columbians to do is based on the best science available. And part of that science also includes how each of us reacts when we're asked to join the fight against COVID-19, how quickly we join the fight and how sustained our commitment is to it. We know that different people have different needs and responsibilities in their lives. But what we're saying is pretty clear. What we do today affects the lives of people everywhere tomorrow and next week 
and next month. What we do today makes a difference. The actions we take today are important. So right now and in the days and weeks and months ahead, we need to do what we're asked to do. We need to do it 100%. We need to do it 100%. And we need to keep doing it until we're told we can stop. That's the fight we're in. That's the reality we're in. And doing it together makes us better as a community, helps what those that we love, helps all of the people that we live around, live with, and care for. That's how we wage our battle. Je veux dire quelques mots en français. Nous avons 140 nouveaux cas de COVID-19 en Colombie-Britannique pour un total de 271 cas en Colombie-Britannique. Parmi les nouveaux cas, 7 sont actuellement, euh, 17 sont actuellement hospitalisés. Et, et euh, je, je viens d'expliquer de, en détail en anglais les chiffres. Nous sommes profondément, profondément attristés d'annoncer également le décès d'un autre résident du Lynn Valley Care Center qui a été testé positif au COVID-19. Nous offrons nos sincères condoléances à leurs proches et au personnel qui a pris soin d'eux. Sur le nombre de cas, 152 sont dans le régime de santé 